LeBron James. Do people really hate LeBron James? I don't think people hate LeBron James. I think people respect LeBron James mm -hmm. more so off the court than on the court. Off the court, young man, come from a single mother, never had any scandals, never had any bad things to say about him personally. He even opened up the uh, the I Promise School, I think it was, that we talked about some mm -hmm. podcast ago. Mm -hmm. Off the court, I think LeBron is a very decent human being. On the court, however, with his game and his antics, I think that's where people have a problem. Now, for mm. the longest, LeBron James has been calling himself the king, which kind of the media dubbed himself the king, but he played into it. And he's called himself the greatest of all time. And matter of fact, we're going to play some videos right now of LeBron yeah. calling himself the greatest of all time. Let me see. Can I share this video? Yes, I can. Yeah, put the boy out there. I don't have no problem with the dude per se, but let's see. Mm -hmm. Here he is, but I feel like he paints a target on his own. That one so, right there made me the greatest player of all time. For That's so many I felt. reasons. I was super, super ecstatic to win one for Cleveland because of the 52 year drought. Like I was ecstatic. Like obviously I showed that, that the first wave of emotion was when y'all everyone saw me crying. Like that was all for 52 years of everything in sports going on in Cleveland. And then after I stopped, I was like, that one right there made you the greatest player of all time. You know, everybody was just talking how they were the greatest team of all time. Like, it was the greatest team to ever assembled. And for us to come back, you know, the way we came back in that fashion, I was like, you did, you did something special. That's probably one of the only times in my career I felt like, oh shit, like you did something special. I haven't had really had time to really like sit back and think, but that, that was a moment. People always debated, who's the greatest player of all time? Dumb question. It should be, who's the greatest team of all time? You know, there are so many teams to choose from. The 91 Chicago Bulls, sorry Showtime. The 92 Bulls, back to back. The 93 Bulls, first three peak. The 97 Bulls, even with the flu. The 98 Bulls, no push off. And my favorite, the 96 Chicago Bulls. 72 wins, tough to beat that. What? You think there's someone else? Prove it. Now that was Michael Jordan talking mm -hmm. about who's the greatest, who's the greatest team. Now you have never heard and you will never hear Michael Jordan say that he's the greatest. Michael Jordan never went out and boasted about himself like that. I feel like LeBron James does it to himself. I feel like that's why he gets so much hate. And this is actually LeBron right here um, when they had the welcome party in Miami, this is what LeBron had to say. We're going to challenge each other in practice. And uh, the way we're going to challenge each other to get better in practice, once the game start, I mean, it's going to be easy. I mean. But we also know you three kings came down here to win championships. Absolutely. Not one, championships. Not two. LeBron, tell us about that. Not two, not three, not four, not five, not six, not seven. I'm Well, there you have it. There's LeBron hyping himself up as the, uh, not necessarily the greatest of all time, but he definitely like, oh, uh, you heard him say that. I didn't say that. He said it all, oh, not one, not two, not three, not five, not six, not seven. And here's the thing about it. LeBron don't even have seven fucking rings. 
LeBron has what? One in Cleveland, one in LA, two in Miami. So that's four. LeBron James recently got swept in the second round of the playoffs. Mm -hmm. He be flip flopping all up and down that goddamn court. He cries to the refs. And uh, this is coming from a bad, this is coming from a passive basketball fan. I like the commentary of surrounding games more than I do actually watching the games. But I see LeBron is always trying to spin the narrative, always trying to make it about himself. Oh, I'm the greatest, I'm the king. And when the king loses, now you have to go into overtime to try to make excuses for your loss. And I kind of feel like that has a lot to do with him not having a father in his life. Uh, I see a lot of feminine tendencies in his ways. Again, this isn't a slight to him off the court. Um, mm -hmm. On the court, he's a great player. He's definitely going to go down as one of the greatest players of all time. Is he the absolute greatest? No, absolutely not. People was pretty much going to unanimously say that Jordan is the GOAT. Period. Mm -hmm. Jordan has multiple MVPs, multiple scoring titles, multiple defensive titles. The Bulls, he was the first player, or I guess the Bulls were the first team to three-peat, not once, but twice. The only team that has even three-peated since the Bulls basically kind of aged out of the game, you know, they had their run, was the Showtime Lakers. Well, not the Showtime Lakers, but the Lakers themselves. Showtime, that was like magic in them back in the day, but the Lakers – with Kobe and Shea. They're the only other team to three P since mm -hmm. Mike George's departure. And I'm gonna throw this disclaimer. I'm gonna throw this disclaimer out there. Michael Jordan is not even my favorite player. I like Jordan. I respect what he did. I like the shoes that they created and branded him around him and that air, air movie about uh Nike. Mm -hmm. And them trying to sign Michael Jordan and them trying to do all this, that, and the third uh, back before Nike's basketball division blew up. That is an awesome movie. It is phenomenal, phenomenal. Like, the movie is phenomenal. I suggest y'all go check out Air. It's on Amazon Prime. Uh, it's free if you got Amazon Prime. I suggest everybody check it out. Uh, but it also shows you how pivotal his mom is. I just want to take a time to shout out the black mothers like LeBron James' wife. Shout out black moms because his mom was pivotal, not pivotal, pivotal in his career. She was the one who was the gatekeeper for mm -hmm. her son. She knew her son was great. She knew her son could potentially be the greatest player of all time. She was the gatekeeper. She was the driving force behind her son. Now, granted, he also had his father. His father was very important in his life, too, because you could easily make the argument without Mr. Jordan holding it down, doing his job as a father, as a husband, as a role model. Mm -hmm probably an outstanding member of the community, you could say that Mrs. Jordan could not do what she did or focus on doing what she did for her son if his dad hadn't been there. And, you know, if you watch The Last Dance or if you follow Michael Jordan, then you know that mm -hmm. him losing his dad, there's this whole conspiracy theory around his dad dying or whatever and that's that's neither here nor there but you can definitely see the influence and this is what we was kind of going back to when it comes to the whole children and the graduation and things when you have a two-parent household that makes a big difference and I legitimately feel if it wasn't for Michael Jordan's father being the rock being the anchor 
his mom wouldn't have been able to focus on brokering the best deal she could possible for her son. And she changed the game with him getting a percentage of every piece of merch that he sold since they made that deal. It's the same with uh, Jason Weaver. You remember mm-hmm. Jason Weaver from Parenthood? Mm-hmm. Uh, you might know him. Uh, he played the voice of Simba in The Lion King. He's an awesome singer, awesome actor. You know, his mom was the one that brokered that deal with Disney for him. Yep. Disney was trying to, and I don't really like Vlad TV. I can't, can't really stand Vlad, but it's not Vlad's fault. Vlad does what Vlad does, and it's these soft showing ass Negroes who go in there. Yeah, I, I killed 15 niggas. Bro, fuck you, nigga. Just shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck up. But anyways, if you watch that interview with Jason Weaver, he talks about how his mom was pivotal. Keep saying pivotal. Pivotal. His mom was very important in his life. He is still eating off a of Lion King today because he gets a certain percentage of the royalties anytime the voices be mm-hmm. his voice is being used, anytime they sing a song, everybody look left, everybody look right, then stand in the spotlight, he get a check. Mm-hmm. Shout out to Black Mamas. I just wanted to put that out there. Shout out to Black Mamas holding it down for their sons because, <clears throat> man, the woman, I, I just feel like these modern day females, I know I'm kind of getting off time, but I just feel like these modern day females don't understand how powerful the position is. If you've ever played chess, you would understand how powerful the queen actually is. Yes, if you knock over the king, you lose the game, but it's the queen who is the most powerful piece on the board because she can move any space, any direction. Mm -hmm. The queen is the baddest bitch on the chessboard easily. So shout out to Black Mamas. But back to your boy, LeBron James. Mm -hmm. You can't proclaim yourself to be the greatest not even Jordan proclaimed himself to be the greatest. That's true. If you watch interviews with Jordan and they've asked him, well, Jordan, do you feel like you're the greatest player of all time? He going to tell you, no. He said, I don't feel like I'm the greatest player of all time. I feel mm-hmm. like that's disrespectful to those who came before me. You can't really quantify Yep. Who's the best of all time? Because, you know, Dr. J and uh, Kareem Abdul Jabbar had their era, and, and, and Magic and Bird had their era. And then when their era was coming to an end, here comes Jordan. Jordan had his era through the 90s. It was That's a true. lot of great Hall of Fame or will be Hall of Fame basketball players that never got a ring because Jordan was that bad. Yes, he couldn't do it without Pippen, Kukoc, Rodman, Horry, yep. a lot of other niggas. But on every team, there has to be a driving force. Mm-hmm. There can only be one leader. Jordan was that leader. Jordan was that driving force. Yes, he was an asshole. But that's just his competitiveness. Jordan wants to win. To this day, if Jordan could lace up his goddamn sneakers and get out on that court, he would. And not to say that he's in bad shape, but he even jokes like, uh, do you think, somebody asked him, like, do you think that you could beat LeBron's Cleveland team or do you think you could beat the Lakers or something like this? He kind of jokes like, like, uh, uh, well, you know, we can't beat them because we're all 50 now. Right. Well, it makes sense. So still to this day, Jordan got that competitive edge in whatever he do. Mm-hmm. But my favorite player is Muggsy Bogues. Shortest player, 5'3", to ever play in the NBA. He's got a slogan, hard over height. He played on the Washington – he was drafted to the Washington Bullets with Manute Bowl, who I think was like seven foot seven. I think the tallest player ever in the NBA and Muggsy was the shortest player. 
They never won a championship. There's a whole lot of players. Barkley never won a chip. Sean Kemp never won a chip. Uh, shit, Patrick Ewing never won a chip. It's a whole lot of niggas who could not get past Jordan. That don't take away what they brought to the game, what they did, but that mm-hmm. just shows you how good he was. They called this dude Jesus in cleats or Jesus in sneakers or whatever. They call no, no, it was Black Jesus. They called Jordan Black Jesus. But one thing, if you hear any of the old superstars or since retired superstars, you will mm-hmm. always hear them say, it is not for you to exalt yourself. It's not for you to toot your own horn. Most That's for say- people around you to say you're the greatest or you're the best or you're this or you're that. When you come up in somewhere and you say, well, I'm the greatest or I feel like this may be the greatest or you came in Miami and you proclaimed that you were going to win seven championships, didn't even come close, fell five short. And let's be honest, D-Wade already had a ring. So who needed who? Mm. LeBron needed Dwayne. Dwayne already had a ring by the time LeBron came to Miami. LeBron has stacked every team that he's ever been on. Like, he's a great player in and of himself, but my nigga, when you call yourself the greatest, when you call the king, like, you paint a target on your back, and he has not lived up, in my opinion, to the hype that he placed around himself. LeBron James fans will argue with you all day, but they ain't going to do nothing but move the goalposts. Yes, he scored, what, 30, it was like 35,000 points this past season or the this season or the season before last. He outscored Kareem Abdul-Jabbar for like second or third and highest points scored in the NBA. Well, the thing about it is, if you look at LeBron's overall career, most of his stats are only because he's been in the league 20 years. Yep. People want to argue about Jordan. People will say, well, he's got six rings. It's not about the rings. It's about what he did in the limited span of time that he had. Jordan three-peated. He left to go play baseball. He was yep. the greatest baseball player, but there's a 30 for 30 documentary on Michael Jordan. Mike, the thing about Mike, it doesn't matter if he's playing golf, basketball, baseball, gambling, whatever Mike does, Mike strives to be the best that he possibly can. That's why everybody respect this dude. This nigga went out and played with a fever and won a championship with a fever. People mm-hmm. respect Jordan so much because of what he did, who he was. Jordan didn't say much off the court, but on the court, he going to show you what it is. And if you watch people give him shit for retiring and doing baseball, but if you watch the 30 for 30 documentary on him playing minor league baseball, and you hear the mm-hmm. coaches talk about how the same work ethic he applied to basketball, he applied to baseball. Jordan is the first person on the field, the last person on the field. Yep. He's working on his hidden practice. And he, yeah, he stunk for the first one year. I think he played for like two seasons. Yeah. I think he played for like two seasons. And and this is why I like documentaries because they're so informational. But if you hear the coaches talk like, yo, Jordan's numbers, his batting average and everything went up. Had Jordan continued to play baseball, he could have made it to the majors. And he could mm-hmm. have possibly been one of the best or been a Hall of Famer baseball player simply because of the work ethic he put in. You could have natural talent. Mm-hmm. That's part of what makes LeBron so great. 
in and, in and of himself with just his basketball skills. He is a naturally gifted dude. He big, he tall, he strong. He is just a naturally gifted dude. But your natural gifts don't mean shit if you're not going to nurture that talent. Mm. That's what mm -hmm. made Jordan the greatest. Not because he didn't ever miss free throws, not because he didn't miss any shots, but because the work ethic that he had when coming into a situation, you're talking about they go in depth to talk about how his body was different. And I don't think people really understand the sciences of bodybuilding. And even I don't really understand it, uh, but I understand that there are certain workouts, there are certain routines, there are certain muscles mm -hmm. that you're working out depending on what sports you have to play. So Jordan was doing workouts to be the best basketball player. He has a basketball body. Then he had to try to get away from doing that, and now he's doing more exercises, doing more workouts geared to training his body to be a baseball body because now you're you're using different muscles. Yeah. This nigga feel Space Jam. Space Jam, one of the best fucking movies of all time. Space mm -hmm. Jam. I don't give a damn nobody said I might leave this motherfucking podcast and watch Space Jam tonight, goddammit. it. Space Jam watch watch it. Yeah. LeBron still chasing the ghost of Jordan. Space Jam too. That was garbage. I I can't say that. I didn't watch it. I just you know I kind of live in nostalgia land. It wasn't. Mm -mm. It wasn't. Mm -mm. Mm, yeah, I kind of live in nostalgia land. Ain't ain't nothing like the Monstars. Cause I mean even still you had Muggsy, who's my favorite player. You had Patrick Ewing. You had Charles mm -hmm. Barkley. Mm -hmm. I think you had Larry Johnson. And then it was a tall white dude. I can't think of his name. But you had like the Hall of Famers, like Space Jam was excellent. And then when you see like Michael Jordan, he do the basketball game with the tunes and, and he win. And then you see the fat white dude come on the court, this big spaceship fly down, and then the motherfucker, ladies and gentlemen, everybody like, they have a spaceship doing down there. Mm -hmm. Michael Jordan. I believe I could fly. You know, this is before niggas say, you know, this is before everybody wanted to cancel R. Kelly. I believe I can fly. I believe I could touch. We were like, yes, R. Kelly. Yes. Sing that shit, my nigga. Sing it. Yeah, we know. Sing that shit. I'm not saying LeBron is a bad dude. I mean, when it comes to social justice, I feel like he could take a better stand. But considering who his friends are, I'm not going to say any names or point any fingers. I can understand why he doesn't take more of a stand. But when mm. you literally point your, point, paint a target on your back, you're calling yourself the greatest. You're constantly hyping yourself up mm -hmm. to the media, to your fans. And then when you lose, it's all type of excuses. The man put up 40 points, I think, in the last game against yes. Denver, he put up 40 points and a half, and then he was basically gassed out for the other half. Mm -hmm. And then when people try to legitimately critique his game, then LeBron fans want to get mad. They want to start calling you out, calling you names. They want to try to make any excuses for him. Somebody even told me was like, well... Muhammad Ali called himself the greatest. How come LeBron can't? Because basketball is a team sport. Right. Boxing is not a team sport. Two men walk in, one man walks out the victim. But you're talking about a whole different sport. Mm -hmm. It's mano we mano. It's one on one. Part of Muhammad Ali calling himself the greatest was getting into these dudes' heads, getting into their psyche, 
that plays a big part. If you play a team sport, you have others that can pick up slack for you. If you're not doing so good today, whatever the case may be, you have teammates that can pick up slack for you. In the boxing ring, if you have an off night, you can your ass whoop. You're going to get lumped up. Yeah. Besides the fact that, you know, Muhammad Ali stood up to the U.S. government, took jail time, lost his titles, damn near went broke, and came back and won a couple of more even after he was past his prime. But then again, that was a different era, though. They was coming fresh off the civil rights era. Or actually, they was right in that civil rights era because he was good friends with Malcolm X. You know, that was the time when you had, when Kareem Abdul-Jabbar was more of a uh, more of a leader general back then. You know, mm-hmm. you had the Jim Browns back then. So it's a little bit different. So I, I personally really don't think that people hate LeBron off the court. I think most people respect LeBron and what he has done. You bought a championship to Cleveland. Yeah. Oh, so granted, you had to jump the three different teams. I get it. LeBron's a great player. But I think it's all his antics. I think it's all the media spin he tries to do, all the damn flip-flopping on the court. Somebody hit the dude be like, Oh, 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 oh. Look at your ass up. Be like Kevin, be like Kevin Hart, grandma. Suck and dick. Oh, right. oh she ain't taking that. Grandma, get your ass up. I just, get your ass up, grandma. I see you. <laughs> but again, I feel like homeboy not having a father in his life because Kobe had a father. Kobe is the closest thing to Jordan that we have had since. Jordan's retirement. Granted, LeBron, mm-hmm. Jordan, two different players, whatever. Kobe's more similar to Jordan, but I think that LeBron would be a slightly different player. I think he'd be more aggressive. I think he wouldn't be so much about the drama and all the media spin and you know all this, that, and the third if he had a father mm-hmm. in his life or had a father figure or an older brother in his life. I think he would be mm-hmm. a slightly different person. But do I think do I take anything away from him as a man, as a black man? I mean, he ain't out here wearing. Well, no, it was that one time he did pull on that dress. Oh, Aside oh, from that, I ain't got no issues with LeBron. I just have mm-hmm. an issue with what he does on the court, what he does off the court as far as media spin. Now they talking about he's hurt. Uh, LeBron played with a hamstring injury. Like, dude, people play with injuries all the time. Apparently, that injury was not bad enough for you not to score 40 points in the half. Like, nigga, just stop. And even Charles Barkley had got mad. And I'm going to land my plan on this. Charles Barkley got mad and was like, why are we still talking about LeBron? Hmm. Why are we talking about the Lakers? The Lakers have been knocked out of the playoffs. Denver's the best team in the league. They the number one team in the league right now. And I'm not sure it's going to be Denver and somebody else in the finals. Mm -hmm. But Charles was like, why are we still talking about the Lakers? Why are we still talking about LeBron when they're no longer even playing? We need to talk about Denver. Denver's never been to the finals before. This is the first time. Hell, even Denver's coach called it out. That there's a media bias towards the Lakers and towards LeBron because even after they got eliminated from the playoffs, they still took, oh, LeBron's talking about retiring. LeBron, why the fuck would you do that? Come on. Because he's an attention whore. Thank you. Rebecca? (laughs) I mean, shit, that's it. That's how I feel about it. Somebody got to be the attention whore. It can't be his wife because his wife is too timid for that. Which I'm not mad at her. She shouldn't be, but I, I agree with every point you made. I just really feel like LeBron James is an attention seeker. He is. If it, if it, he's narcissistic to an extent because if it ain't about LeBron, it don't matter in a sense. It, it's got to all. It's got to all be about him, and the attention has to be on him. That's and the way again, I feel. I don't take nothing away from the brother. He's worked hard, very hard to get where he is. 
Do I think he's a Kobe Bryant? No. If I had to choose between him and Kobe, I'd pick Kobe because, I mean, I'm kind of biased. I agree that for me, Jordan was my favorite player. But at the same time, I appreciated Jordan's work ethic. And the work ethic between Kobe Bryant and Michael Jordan are exactly the same for me. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's kind of how I like to pride myself on things. Like if I fully commit to something, I'd be the first one there and I'd be the last one to get up out of there. But that's just about work ethic. I feel like LeBron James is like, oh yeah, I'm the king, I'm this shit. Like you smelling yourself way too much. Your nose been in the air way too long. Mm. It's been in the air way too long. And then when the tension is on somebody else, here he is again throwing a fit, which is, oh well, now you got to put something in the media so that the attention can be back on you because the spotlight always has to be on you and what you doing and what you got going on. This, I mean, I feel like they painted a narrative for LeBron in a sense of not just him being the greatest or him branding himself as the greatest of all time and fans branding him King James, but he's also been looked to as this leader in this um, disciplinarian, so to speak, for his team, this course correction for his team, like, oh, well, they ain't supposed to be doing this. And LeBron reprimanded his, you know, one of his team members for this. And woo, like for me, that's how it looks to me. And I would just, I can't wait until the documentary comes out about that particular situation. I can't wait to hear them stories. Mm. If they ever get told, that's if they ever get told. But yeah, I think he's an attention whore. Fair enough. Fair enough. Fair enough.